Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our YouTube Live this Monday, and it's World Pharmacist Day, so happy World Pharmacist Day, everybody. Um, we're really excited about this event because, for a start, I don't think we've had anyone from the pharmacy team on one of our live events before, and it's great to be able to celebrate the, the um, pharmacists and other roles within the pharmacy team um, and all the work they do, because I think, you know, we've all heard of pharmacists, but we might have quite a narrow view about where they work, what they do and I'm really confident that in the next half an hour 45 minutes you're going to hear about roles that you, you never even knew existed and um, different ways that pharmacists, pharmacy technicians, pharmacy assistants are working. Um, I'm Abby from the NHS Health Careers team and really pleased to be joined by members of the pharmacy team today um, so I'm going to get them to introduce themselves in a minute and then what we'll do is I've got some questions for them and then you are able to answer your um, sorry not answer your questions ask your questions so please do put your questions um, into the chat and we will try and get through as many of them as we can um, so yeah please don't hold back we've got three amazing panelists here and they are ready and willing to answer your questions so please do do go for it um, okay, so if I could just get the three of you to just introduce yourselves before we get kind of stuck into the questions. I'll just go around in the order I can see on the screen. So, Amrita, would you go first, please? Queen's Medical Centre. Thank you, Joe. And Wendy? Um, hi, everyone. I'm Wendy, and I'm a clinical pharmacist working in a primary care network based in Eckfield, and I also do local and community um, on the weekends as well. Brilliant. Thank you all so much. And I'm really excited because we've got a great range of kind of settings that you're all working in as well, and we'll hear more about that um, as we get kind of stuck in. So, Wendy, I'm going to start with you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your career journey since leaving school, please? Um, so, yes, um, I have always wanted to be a doctor. So um, during my A-levels, I did apply to study medicine. However, I couldn't, I didn't get into medicine. So during clearance, um, I was speaking to my mum and she recommended pharmacy. And I was just, oh, I don't know what pharmacists do. Pharmacists are always like, dashing our medicines, I don't want to be that. And she encouraged me to go for the course. So um, my first year of uni, I didn't really enjoy it because I didn't know what I was doing. Second year of uni, got a little bit more like chemistry side, the biology side. I was like, OK, I kind of like this. And then um, I just plugged myself into it and um, enjoyed it all the way through. And yeah, here I am um, working as a pharmacist. So, um, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. And, I, and what we always really enjoy on these live events is when there's some, and this is going to sound weird, but when things haven't necessarily gone totally to plan, because they often don't, do they? And we need to find different ways to to do things, different ways to get there or have a plan B. So, um, yeah, cl clearing is a great example of um, the opportunities that, that can come up. Um, Wendy, this might be a difficult question to answer, I realise, but do you have a typical day? And if so, what's it like? Um, so working in primary care, so I have always worked in primary care since I qualified. Um, there is nothing like a typical day. Um, so it could be anything from in the morning coming in, having a clinic, and it could be a, um, a wide range of um, chronic conditions, so from diabetes to review, diabetes review to heart failure, to asthma, to um, hypertension, whatever. Or it could be a doctor coming to you saying, hey, I've got this patient. Um, I'm not too sure what to do in terms of medicine. Would you want to research and then give me some advice on what to prescribe? Or it could really be like doing flu clinics. It could be doing vaccination clinics. So it could just be a lot of things um, on a day. Um, yeah. Brilliant. So a lot of variety then. And so, just Wendy, just for the people watching who might not know, primary care is, uh, so you're based in a GP practice or several GP practices, are you? Yeah, so I'm part of a primary care network, meaning that I work across um, different practices, so GP surgeries within Enfield. Um, but I'm usually based in two surgeries, but every now and then, um, if we do have a project coming up, I can be asked to help in a um, particular surgery and then I would yeah, help over there. 
I'm usually faithful to surgery. So I get to have that contact with patients and follow up on them as well. So it's not all lost. Thank you, Wendy. Um, and Rita, if I could um, come to you next, please. So same question in terms of kind of what, you know, potted history of your, your career journey since school. So in secondary school and I think year 10, we had a careers fair yeah. where a pharmacist spoke to me. Um, and then I went on to do some work experience when I was in year 11 at my local Lloyd's pharmacy um, and kind of just got a feel of what pharmacy was like. But I knew that I liked more of the application that happens in hospital as opposed to the shop dynamic in community so I ended up doing some placements in hospital pharmacy and that's where I really fell in love with it um, and then I did my pre-registration training in hospital and then I've just stayed in hospital since um, and so I did like my junior training years in, in a certain hospital and then I moved over to the one I'm in now I did my senior training years but then chose to specialise in critical care. Brilliant thank you um, and what what kind of appealed to you about pharmacy? What what was it that made it? So what did that pharmacist say to you at that careers fair that kind of got you a bit hooked and, and made you want to go down that path? So for me, I just knew which subjects I excelled in at school. Like I really enjoyed chemistry. I enjoyed biology and I loved maths. So for me, it was kind of like the ideal fit. I wasn't someone that was quite good with, I guess, blood and, you know, touching paint like that kind of thing it wasn't really something I was interested in so nursing and medicine wasn't a route I wanted to take but I still wanted that involvement um, and I still wanted that impact in the patient journey so for me pharmacy kind of fit perfectly in that role especially in hospital because you're so involved in that patient journey you're not just around pharmacists all day you're around doctors nurses physios um occupational therapists dietitians it's like a whole faceted role that you just you don't you're not alone in hospital so i think with pharmacy and hospital what i really like is the fact that you're not just learning off other pharmacists you're also learning off other healthcare professionals so you're constantly learning different skills and in critical care in particular a lot of our management is around organ support so whether that be for your lungs so a ventilator for your heart with special drugs or even for your kidneys with like a filter device but drugs impact each organ differently and I think critical care pharmacy lets you explore that more so I think that's what drew, drew me to pharmacy the most was just how many different things I can learn every day as well as looking at the body as a whole. Yeah. I really like what you said about kind of you know not being that keen on blood but really want still wanting that involvement with patients and I think you know that's something as a health careers team we sometimes get people saying oh but I don't like vomit and I don't like blood I'm not going to be able to do anything but there are so many roles aren't there where you can still have that patient contact but not have to deal with that if that's not what you want to do which is fine <laughs> great thank you um joe guess what question i'm going to ask you what's guess your what kind of career <laughs> what's your career journey been like since since school so so i went to sixth form um like i'm rita i always sort of liked my science subjects and my maths um, and i originally applied to go on to university to do biology um, and then I kind of got there and within a month or so I just kind of realised as much as I loved the subject I didn't want to be learning in that type of environment sort of especially not straight from school so I ended up taking a bit of a step back and um, had a bit of a gap here um, and just sort of worked in retail for a little bit really um, which again I, I loved aspects of retail but I missed that science element to things so I don't know I think someone just mentioned it in passing to me one day like oh what about pharmacy or like a community pharmacy and honestly until that point I wouldn't have even considered knowing what a technician or a pharmacy even did um, so from there really I just kind of started looking at work for the hospitals and and there was a job come up for an apprentice uh, pharmacy assistant so I, I went and I did that course I really enjoyed it and then I went on to do yet another course to become a pharmacy technician so I've kind of just worked my way up through through the hospital environment, really. Brilliant. And so a, another example of of someone who where things haven't gone to the original plan. And and you it, it that takes a lot of courage, actually, to say, do you know what? This isn't working for me. I need to find a different way to to do this. So that's brilliant to hear that you've been able to kind of 
progress your career through apprenticeships as well um, because presumably that means you're, you've been getting paid while you've been doing your training. Yeah that was one of the yeah. massive benefits to it yeah. it's, even though it's not obviously not the best pay in the world it's it's better to be getting money alongside while you're doing something you're enjoying. Yeah brilliant um, and Joe, for you, again, kind of, I know this might not be the easiest question to answer, but what would a typical day look like? Can you kind of walk us through it? Yeah. So, again, that's another reason that I really like the job is the the, multi, the multi sort of tasks that you have to do in a day. But for me, I think I kind of come in, I have regular contact with patients on the wards, um, maybe get to talk to them when they're admitted to hospital, see what, what medicines are on at home, if they're getting on with those medicines, if they've got any problems. Um, and then also there's that patient journey of seeing them while they're in hospital, sort of get better and well enough to go home. Then there's the, the chance to talk to them again about any new medicines they might be taking or amendments to their doses perhaps. Um, and just it's giving, it's giving that patient a chance to ask all the questions to feel comfortable to go home. The last thing in the world you want to do is be going home from hospital scared, you don't know what you're doing. So we're, we're kind of there as like that friendly face to be like, no, no questions, silly, no matter how big or small, we're there to answer it for you. That's great. So it's not just the science knowledge that you're using in your job, but there's a real kind of um, reassurance and almost yes. almost like a counselling element to your role by the sounds of it. Yeah, for sure. A lot of it is just just having the patient be calm enough to know that they're happy with their knowledge on something before they leave. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Okay, Wendy, I'm going to come back to you. Um, you meant you've touched on this a little bit already because you mentioned that the the GPs are sometimes coming to you for advice about medicines and that might be a surprise to lots of people that, that you know that because I think a lot of people think well that it's the GPs who are making all the decisions but but that's where you know pharmacists come in in terms of offering advice what other um, members of the team do you regularly work with? Yeah so um, just to start off with people being surprised I think it's worth noting that pharmacists are experts in medicines so we do have like the knowledge in the medicine so the GP's part the doctor's part is to do the diagnosis and then we would um just make sure that the medicine being given out is given out is safe and appropriate to use um so I work with a lot of people um in the GP surgery so we do have like um the physiotherapist um and they act in the role as a first contact practitioner based on site so we do have pain and um, pain patients and um if we do want to refer them over we refer them over to the physio and they make the onwards referrals. We do have advanced nurses, nurse practitioners based in the surgery as well. They could do the triage in if people come in with an acute case and then um, triage it to the appropriate clinician. We also work with um, the phlebotomist. We do have that on there. We do do like rectal screening, so people looking at the eye also on site. So it's just a whole lot of people um, working in one um, one space and it just makes it so easy to learn from and um, each other and also to refer and then that gives the continuity of care so you don't have to wait and then just yeah you can just literally pop into someone's office saying hey I've got this patient do you mind seeing them and then just get seen so yeah it's just a lot of people working. Nice so that real feeling of everyone contributing their kind of bit to that to that patient journey and to to yeah make a difference for patients I love that thanks Wendy. Um, again, you've you've touched on this already, really, but can you tell us a bit more about that connection between what you do and patients at the end of the day? So I think our, I feel like pharmacist is very special because sometimes you do get a patient coming in. So we do have face to face. So you get a patient coming in and they're just like, this is I don't know how to take it. I don't know what to do. So we just sit down with the patient, counsel them on how to take it, just tell them what the drugs do. And we do have patients who sometimes like struggle to take their medicines. So we can arrange for them to put be put in boxes for them, which makes sense. Yeah. And also like with we tend to deal with in primary care, pharmacists tend to deal with chronic conditions. So we do part of the journey of the patient. So you can diagnose with diabetes. The pharmacist is gonna take care of you at each step. Maybe if the medicine you're on is still safe for you. If it needs reduction, if it needs increase, pharmacists are able to do that. And we do have that as well. And in terms of my community background, as I said, I do do a community and row on Saturdays as well. I tend to see patients with acute cases. So you'd have a child coming in saying, I'm coughing. 
and then you as a pharmacist would have to deal with the child because it's a Saturday, mum wants to go to the playground, but you I've got this ready for you and then help them there as well. So we do have acute cases in community and then in the GP we do the chronic condition monitoring. Brilliant. So again, variety is obviously what, you know, one of the things that um, is great about what you're doing. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Joe, if I could come back to you and just ask you a little bit more about the apprenticeships that you've done. Um, first question is how, how long did each apprenticeship take to do? Okay, um, so the first one that I did to become the pharmacy assistant generally is about 12 months to about 18 months. So I think you just have to do a minute, I think it's a bare minimum of 12 months sort of on the job and then you sort of you have your on your job side and then you have sort of your college day release to do sort of the, the theory side of things as well. Yeah. Um, and then the second course, the technician course obviously is a bit longer and if I think it's like an equivalent to three A-levels um, and that one I believe it's a minimum of two years but it can be between two and three years that one. And and how did the split work between, so you mentioned that you do, you've got the hands-on learning, you've got the more kind of classroom-based academic work um, learning, how did the split between those two things um, work in general? Um, I th honestly I think it was quite nice, um, sort of all the work from the college was kind of laid out quite clearly in terms of they say you're supposed to have 10, I think it's a 10% off the job. So that that 10% basically could be your college day, for example. So imagine not apprentices normally work Monday to Friday and have a set number of hours. So that college release day is like an equivalent to that percentage. Yeah. And then you go away and sort of have kind of like homework in a way. It's a bit like having your coursework. And then the practical side of why you're at work is kind of just it's just like your day to day of working, but you might just have to write it up as like a like a reflective account of what you have done. And then you, you, have to... you carry on. So I was just going to say sometimes, you know, you normally have like a workplace mentor as well, who's sort of there to support you and they kind of sign off all of your reflective accounts as well. Great stuff. Um, what was I going to ask you now? It's good. Oh, I know. Did you have exams at the end of your apprenticeship? Or was it all coursework and kind of placement? So personally for me, mine was all coursework and placement. Um, but I know some of the newer apprentices who've done done the course since I finished mine um, probably about three, four years ago, um, they did have like an end of end of sort of a unit exam or like one big exam at the end of theirs. But it, honestly, don't let it put you off. It's, it's completely just to, just to prove that what you've learned throughout your course, you're going to be putting into practice and you understand the importance of what you've learned. It's nothing to be put off by. And it sounds like you were really well supported through the process, both from the college point of view and from the work placement point of view. Yes, definitely. Honestly, it's one of those, if any problem, no how big or small, there's someone always a phone call away, an email away. And then you've got that added bonus of someone actually on work site to go and talk to. Thank you, Joe. Um, and Rita, if I could come back to you, um, yeah. could you tell us what, what what do you love about your job? What's the favourite bit of, of your job? I think it's putting into practice what I learned in my degree to the extent of getting down to exactly how drugs work in the body because I feel like normally when you're checking drugs on charts you're kind of just going through accuracy checking and making sure that clinically they're safe but I think with critical care there's a lot more involved with the drugs for example putting patients to sleep and um, waking them up um, supporting their organs for example their heart like the heart drugs I spoke about and there's a lot more I think particular monitoring for them so it allows me just to be a bit more conscientious with blood results and I think it just gives me that extra I guess immediate result of the decisions I make so sometimes if we ask to I guess reduce a certain concentration of a medication um, because our conditions are quite acute and the patients are quite acutely and well you can kind of see the impact you're making quite quickly so if a patient's heart's not beating to the to the rhythm that's supposed to be and we adjust one of the heart medications a little bit you can see the rhythm correct like within a few hours so it's just I guess that immediate you know impact that you're you're having on that patient just seeing that and I think that's the probably one of my most favorite parts of my job I think a lot of um, 
kind of as you get into working life and and maybe you know progress move between different jobs it's about working out what you enjoy isn't it and yeah. kind of and, but also important to work out what you're not so keen on but that you know that's important too and kind of it can help help direct you um have you got ideas about where you might want your career to go in the future and Rita or are you just kind of playing by ear at the minute well, to be fair, when I was younger in my career, I had didn't I'd never worked in critical care before. So me coming into this role was quite on the whim, as in the right opportunity came up at the right time. Um, and I think my role was a seven to eight a step up. So that basically means that they train you for the year um, heading towards the promotion. So when you do have the promotion, you you have the skill set. You're kind of not just kind of thrown into the deep end kind of thing. So when this job came up, I felt like it was the right way to train. So in terms of my future, I definitely see it in relation to critical care. So at the moment, I am a specialist, so I'm an 8A. So the next step would be an 8B in the same area. So if I if the right opportunity came up, I'd love to be in more of a leadership role within critical care. Um, but if similarly, if something else came up um, within another specialty, um, one thing I love about pharmacy is that you can just start from scratch again and learn on the job. So I'm not opposed to heading towards that. But in the distance, distance future, um, I definitely it's a big aspiration, but I would love to be a chief pharmacist of a hospital. Um, I'd love that. Um, it, I just love working with people and I think I definitely would like to see myself in a leadership position where I can make more of a direct change in terms of service level um, but yeah that's like the end end goal but at the moment I'm happy to look at like the next two three years so maybe like an 8B or something somewhere. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. But it's great to know, isn't it, that there is something, you know, there there is real opportunity to progress um, in terms of, you know, whether you're going down a leadership route or a specialist route or an academic route for some people yeah. as well or research. So, yeah, lots, lots of options. Brilliant. Thank you. OK, just before we start answering some questions from the audience, um, just want to ask whoever of you wants to respond, all of you, one of you, doesn't matter. We might have some people watching now who are maybe considering a career in the NHS, but not quite sure, not quite sure what they want to do. What would what would you say to someone kind of thinking about a career in the NHS um, and perhaps sort of teetering on the edge of making a decision? I'll just wait for someone to go first. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Wendy, um, you look like you're about to say something. Yeah. Um, I would just say I would 100% recommend it. Um, first off, just for the satisfaction that you get. I do see patients um, coming in, sometimes feeling very low because like they've just been diagnosed with diabetes. They feel like their lives is, has just ended. They can't eat their best donuts. They can't have their best chocolate. And I think it's the whole idea of just sitting with them, say, we can make small changes and you can get to the other side and you can still enjoy this, um, this um, actual, like, the, the things that you love and I just see like just the growth of people actually helping them build discipline help, helping them come back to like being um not normal but then getting like their diabetes in remission it's just like a joy to see them and also with patients being so grateful that they have people that they can speak to I just feel like that brings me so much joy just to see a patient saying hey you actually helped me I don't have diabetes anymore so let's go for a cup of tea it's just it's just amazing so yeah oh, oh that's really lovely thank you thank wendy you. and and again highlights that it's not just you know like we were saying with joe just then it's it's not just you're not just talking to people about medicines you're there's a there's a wider context isn't there and a wider conversation going on so that's really lovely um joe or amrita anything you you would say to someone not quite sure yeah <clears throat> um, i think for me is that the fact is you don't I think until you sort of realise and start looking into it how big the NHS actually is and it's got so many resources available it's like there's apprenticeships there's learning on the jobs there's progression once you're here um, and like you say once you get trained in one area there's nothing so you can't sidestep into a different area as well so I would just say it's the NHS is an amazing opportunity to consider to sort of even as just a starting point to consider what you might or might not like. Thank you, Joe. And Rita, you don't have to add anything, but is there anything you want to add? I think it's more from like a health and wellbeing perspective. I think 
if you're somebody that feels that they want to be in an environment that they feel supported and heard I definitely feel like in the NHS the experience I've had so far there's always someone like behind another door in another office down the corridor on the ward and there's always someone there to like ask for help and whether that be academically like Joe just said to you know progress or train or that be that you're that like listening ear for that patient like Wendy said but I think it's more when you feel like there's a need for something the NHS I feel like will always try its best to meet that need whether that be um, arranging for you to go for extra training extra classes they also have health and well-being sessions on yoga sessions on in the mornings like there's just so much more like a job is about I'd say 80% of your life at the moment you spend more time at work than you do at home so I think if you're doing a job somewhere you feel supported and heard I think the NHS is definitely where that's at so if you guys are thinking about a career in the NHS definitely get yourself on a placement um, and just have a little taster session on the field that you're interested in but yeah that's probably what, I, what I'd say Lovely, thank you. And really a lovely selection of answers from the three of you then. So thank you very much. OK, right. I am just going to I've, I need to look at my phone because one of our team members is sending me the questions that you're putting in. So I'm not sorting out my social life. I am looking to see um, what's going on behind the scenes. OK, now apparently the picture has been really really slow on this so we are really sorry um it sounds like there's quite a lag um so thank you for bearing with us um and hopefully you know if you sit there long enough you'll you'll get to hear it all um right so someone here has asked they said i'm currently i currently work as a healthcare assistant are there opportunities for me to join the pharmacy team Anyone want to have a go at that one? If not, I'm happy to um, have a go. But I'm, I'm happy to sort of jump in on that. Go on then, Joe. Um, I'd say probably from what you're doing now, there's absolutely no reason for you not to go into maybe understanding maybe what like a pharmacy assistant does or potentially start onto a pharmacy technician course. Um, there's sort of levels that you can go in at that you just need your GCSEs. Um, and no prior experience as well with the NHS, they're more than happy to sort of take you from ground level and work your way up in terms of knowledge. So I'd say 100% that's a way in to consider into pharmacy. Thanks, Joe. And and just to say, whoever's asked that question as well, that your experience as a healthcare assistant is going to stand you in really good stead yeah, um, for for getting stuck in um in in a job in pharmacy. So you might want to have a chat to your um, line manager or um, go and speak to the if there's a training and education department in your if you're working in an NHS trust. Or, or approach perhaps the pharmacy manager, someone in the pharmacy team. But jobs jobs and apprenticeships will be advertised on the NHS jobs website. So that's jobs.nhs.uk. So that's where you'll find those. But yeah, opportunities. So have a look um, and go for it. OK, someone else has said, I'm a level five health and social care student. Can I switch to pharmacy? What training is available? Again, anyone want to have a go at that one? Um, if not so I, it, um, it sort of depends so I think I think you can definitely switch but it depends on the university because I remember at one of the universities I think it was Wolverhampton potentially they do like a foundation program so you do like even if you've done a course somewhere else or you've done like potentially maybe not the A levels in the subject area don't quote me on this but I think this is how it works um, that you do like a foundation year where you kind of make up the content that you might not have covered um, in those subjects and then if you pass that foundation year you then get let on to the pharmacy program I think that's how it works yeah. in yeah, you're absolutely right, Amrita. There are some um, uh, courses that do that. So if it's a pharmacist that you want to be to become, then um, you can have a look on our health careers website. If you find the course finder, if we can put the link in the chat, we will do that for you. Um, but if you go to our course finder on the website, um, you can put pharmacy in and then you can have a look at all the universities that run pharmacy courses click through to the university and then you can look at the entry requirements. As Amrita said, some of them do offer these foundation years. So if you haven't got those level three qualifications that you might need, so exactly the right A-levels, then there might be a way in. The other option would be, as Joe was saying just now, is you know if you're interested in other roles in the team, then pharmacy assistant, pharmacy technician um, training could be open to you. So um, yeah, 
go go for it do your research and um see what's out there and good luck whatever you decide to do okay so someone else has said i work as a healthcare support worker but have experience in pharmaceutical manufacturing what pharmacy opportunities are there in the nhs we have um an aseptics department within our pharmacy department so they do the making up of um, parental nutrition and chemotherapy so there's a lot of transferable skills that you might have to use in our aseptics department but if you want a complete change then there's always other places such as dispensary um, and ward-based drug history taking which I'm sure Joe would know a bit more about um, but yeah so I think aseptics is something that's quite a transferable skill you could go into yeah but i was just going to add sorry to that one um, i know i'm hospital in nottingham we've also we've got like a cytotoxic lab yeah. we've a septic unit there's also like a non-sterile manufacturing so there's there's loads of transferable skills there sort of within a production side of pharmacy if you wanted to go into that Great stuff thank you um so hopefully that's given you some ideas to um to go away and, and have a bit of a look at um okay i've got another one here so i'm a year 13 student do you have any tips for a personal statement for pharmacy good question wendy do you want to um come in on this one yeah i was just gonna say um if you've done your um if you've had a replacement if you haven't i would say there might be chance to look placement you've already had it i think what is important is actually explaining what you've learned. So don't just state that you had um, a placement in a GP or in a community. Actually state what you've learned. Did you see um, pharmacists working with other healthcare professionals? So talk about working in a multidisciplinary sector. Did you see pharmacists providing person-centered care? Talk about that one. And um, it might be worth going through um, the pharmacy standards and matching them to what you saw in there. So with the pharmacy standards, we do have person-centered care, I'm using professional judgment, multidisciplinary team. So do you match what you saw to these statements and then explain what you've learned from there. So, yeah. Great tips. Thank you, Wendy. And Rita, I don't know if you, is there anything else you'd add in terms of um, personal statements? So for me, I got told this once um, when I went to an Oriel interview, I remember. It was in a lift. Somebody gave me the advice because I looked nervous. They said to use the STAR technique whenever I'm writing an answer. So that basically means situation, explaining what it is, the task, your action, and also your reflection. Reflection being the most important. Um, so when you are relating back to how Wendy said those situations, or those um, standards and you're giving examples just make sure you're reflecting on your examples in your answer because it kind of shows the person what they need to tick off when they're giving you the scoring for your statement it's kind of guiding them to giving you more points so it's probably not pharmacy specific but that's a technique that I think works really well that's great thank you and that you know that that obviously that's really well aligned with what Wendy said around that reflection so it's not about having the most incredible work experience placement ever it's about what you take from it isn't it it's about what you observe around you um, and how you can reflect on that and how you can evidence that you're the right sort of person for that you know that training that job that apprenticeship um okay another question someone said any tips for NHS job applications um Joe any thoughts on that um I think for sure, um, in terms of the online applications, um, I think one of the most is just go through the job specification and just kind of, even if you print it off and kind of tick it as you talk about it, and just try and show you've got the skills or you, that you to sell yourself as the right person. Just relate it to any part of your life, really. It's not, like you say, you don't need the best work experience in the world. It's about showing that you can, you've got the skills to be able to do that job. And also, I know it, I know all of the different NHS trusts always have their values and behaviours. I know that's really quite important. So just have a quick read of them. And again, relay how you think that they integrate into a daily work life. That is so, that's the absolute absolutely spot on advice there joe and you know that there are the nhs values from the nhs constitution but also as you say most nhs um, employers have their own set of values as well and that shows you've done your homework doesn't it it shows you really want the job um and the other thing i would just add is that on each advert job advert on the nhs jobs website you'll see a named contact give them a call 
you know, before you apply, before an interview, that's what the number's there for. It shows initiative and you might find out some kind of, you know, some extra information about the job you're applying for. And Rita or Wendy, anything else you want to add in terms of applying for jobs? I was just going to say, um, don't be humble, because a lot of people try to downplay their skills. Um, <laughs> just like, oh, um, well, be humble within a reason, but just sell yourself. So pull your best um, self forward, because I know people just write, oh, I'm good at this. I think you're good at this. So you're excellent at this. You've been doing this for a long time. So you're actually well equipped and expecting that. So do sell yourself a bit more. Um, and yeah, also it might be nice if it's quite close, just to go in there. If it was like surgery, just to go in there as a patient or just walking around, see how it's like and see whether you actually like it. So in as much as you want the job also, is that the right place for you? Do you like the people there? Do you like the environment? So um, yeah. Brilliant. I love that. Thanks, Wendy. Um, Right, talking of work experience, we've been mentioning that already. Someone has asked how they can get work experience. Now, we know this can be a really, really thorny issue um, because there doesn't tend to be the capacity there for all the people that want work experience. But any top tips? How would you go about it if you were trying to get work experience now? When I was in university, I was looking for a Saturday job at a local, 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 local Lloyd's pharmacy. What I did was I just literally printed off my CV and had it ready and just walked down like all the high streets that I knew that I knew I wouldn't mind commuting to and just dropped my CV off. And a lot of them, obviously, you probably let's say you gave them to 10, you might hear a no from like eight, but you will actually get two that might say yeah sure and if they can't offer you a job they can offer you that work experience placement so it's kind of like knocking do you know what I mean you're kind of getting the job potentially or you're getting the experience so and also when you're at university or you know work when you're younger you want that Saturday job sometimes so it kind of works to the benefit of both so yeah I'd say just try and get yourself out there maybe just doing the footwork and going in person maybe just makes that little extra um difference instead of being behind I guess an email advice thank you Amrita anyone else Wendy or Joe anything to um, add there don't be scared of rejection I recently had to look for job um, job work experience for my independent subscribing and you would send a lot of emails you get a lot of rejections but I think also what is worth is actually finding a named person within the um so if it's a hospital that apply for job job um a job experience in the hospital just find the main person in charge of that and send them a personal email and then also try and say what you can bring to the team so um they will be given their time to you just say i'm happy to also do this and um, as well just so that they know that you're not just there to gain and collect from them but you're also happy to actually help them out and um, should they need help so yeah I like that. Thank you, Wendy. But yeah, it's right. So get, you know, if you've got an NHS trust near you, get on their website, put work experience or volunteering into the search bar um, and see if you can find a, um, an email address or, or a phone number. Each, the slightly confusing thing about the NHS is that it is made up of all these separate employers and each one of those organisations will have a slightly different way of doing things. Some might have the most incredible work experience opportunities and others might have very, very little. Um, Joe, I don't know if you, you don't, don't feel you have to but anything you want to add did you ever try and get any work experience in um looking back on it when i was um in my year 10 doing your year 10 sort of weeks work experience i did apply to a couple of pharmacies but also to another kind of job that i was considering at the time but i did hear back from one of the pharmacies and they were willing and i just i do remember they said to me i went around with my cvs and they went we like the fact that you actually came in in person and showed a smile and interest it's so yeah get, get your face out there and just like, show, show that you have some care in you that you actually want to learn this is yeah. probably the best tip yeah so you're not just doing it as a tick box exercise because oh, yeah. i've been told i've got to do some work experience yeah brilliant okay right i think that is it in terms of the questions and that's brilliant timing um Massive thank you, Amrita, Wendy and Joe, for joining us. Um, uh, it's the end of a Monday. Mondays can be tough. You've stayed later than you normally would. Thank you so much for giving up your time and telling your stories and, and giving those top tips. It's been brilliant and 
interesting and inspiring. Um, thank you to all of you who have joined us watching. Um, we really hope you've enjoyed this. And obviously this will be available on Catch Up if you think, um, you know, someone else you know might want to watch it or if you want to watch bits back afterwards. Thank you for all your questions as well. It's been a really nice range of questions. Um, so that's been.